Will my house work for holiday projection mapping? Your biggest considerations are house size and color, yard length, obstructions and ambient light. House size. One important thing to bear in mind is that the further away you move your projector from a surface, the bigger the projected image gets. If you have a large house, and by large I'm talking 40 to 50 feet plus in width, to cover the whole thing with one projector, you will need a fairly long front yard, probably at least 20 to 30 feet depending on the projector you use. The further back you go, you lose brightness. So if you have a large house, you might need to be thinking about getting a brighter a projector. If you're struggling with these factors, you could choose to focus on just part of the house, or rather than map the whole thing with one projector, you could use two or more projectors and split the whole surface into more manageable chunks. House colour. Having a white or light grey house is the holy grail of projection mapping. Dark materials like brick, dark siding or paint will need a brighter projector to show up with good colours. If your house material is a problem for you, you can consider covering it with material or screens, and there's always the drastic solution of repainting with a lighter colour. The texture of your house material also plays a part. Smooth render will show up an image nicely without any distortion. Rough stone, on the other hand, will distort the image, so you might choose not to put detailed video content like movie clips on those surfaces. House shape. In terms of the shape of your house, think about what might cast a shadow. For example, if you have a one-storey porch and you're projecting from below the level of the porch roof, it will cast a shadow on the surface above. So in this instance, it would be an advantage to mount your projector up high or project on a different part of the house. Windows. When it comes to windows, the light from the projector will go straight through the glass and won't form an image unless you put something in the windows to catch the projection. You can use shades, curtains, or other coverings like fabric, frosted shower curtains, paper, cardboard, or perforated vinyl. Obstructions. Anything that is between the projector beam and the house will cast a shadow. This can be trees, shrubs, statues, and other structures or landscaping in your yard. What are your options? You should try to choose an initial projector position that avoids as many of these obstructions as possible. You can design your show to avoid these areas where there are shadows cast from unavoidable obstructions. Or the most extreme option is to cut down or remove the obstructions from your yard entirely. Ambient light. How much ambient light do you have around your house? By this I mean how much other light is competing with your projections. Other sources of light and light pollution around your house will make your projections look washed out, duller and appear less bright. Ambient light pollution can come from many different sources including street lighting, yard lights, light from the sky and car headlights from people watching your show. When dealing with street lighting, the best thing is to talk to your city or whoever manages your street lighting and hopefully negotiate something with them. They might be willing to install a shield to block any intrusive light, for example. Or you could also put up some sort of screen in your yard to try to exclude some of the light. Obviously turn off all your own yard lights and politely ask if your neighbours might be willing to do the same during the hours your show is taking place. As for light from the sky, schedule your show to start after the sun has fully gone down. This might be a deal breaker when it comes to shows that take place when the days are long, like in summer in the Northern Hemisphere for 4th of July celebrations, Easter and so on. Ask audience members viewing the show from their car to turn off their headlights while they are parked. If you can't turn off or screen unwanted sources of ambient lighting, your only other option is to outcompete them with more projector brightness. Location. Is your house in a good location for a projection mapping show? Some questions you might want to ask are, is it convenient and safe for people to visit? If you live on a junction and people are slowing and parking in their cars, that might not be safe. If you live on a busy road, is it safe to encourage pedestrians to cross or be distracted by your show? Finally, ask yourself whether your street or drive has a good flow so that people can get in and out. Neighbours. Think about what kind of neighbours you have and how they are likely to react. 
the things that are most likely to annoy neighbours are the increased noise from music or the audience and also extra foot and road traffic. You can reduce the impact of your show on your neighbours by offering them some hours of respite. For example, don't project every night of the week and create a break between shows so a crowd doesn't build up. Also keep sound to a reasonable level. Plan your show so that audience members on foot aren't encouraged to wander onto your neighbour's land or trample their planting and audience members in cars don't block your neighbour's driveway. If this video helped you, say thanks by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next video.